Hello YouTubers, welcome back. What I'm going to do for you this week is a piece of beach. Um, I was out, it was a lovely day yesterday and I took the tarpaulin off my wood store and I was chopping up some um, wood blanks. I'm just trying to get as many as I can in for the winter. So you have to go out there when it's wet and cold, cutting stuff up. So um, I had a piece of beach and I cut that, that was a piece of branch that was growing at the side and if you can see that there is some most beautiful grain in there because I picked that I cut that off and I was just picking it going to pick it up and I was going to chuck it in the firewood pot and I saw that gorgeous grain running through there so I thought what I might do is just quickly turn a little pot keep it on the bottom the same keep this where it flares up hollow down in there so you're going to get a small pot in there with all of this like arching up behind it and hopefully all that gorgeous grain will be running through there and I think that's going to be quite a nice little project because the normally when you do a bowl especially something like a fruit bowl you don't normally see the sides because the bowls flared out to give you the maximum size inside and it's either full of fruit or as I say as it comes out like that you don't actually get to see the sides at all so you don't get to see any of the wood so I'm ho hoping that beautiful grain structure is going to come all through there and so you can have a little bowl in there and then you can have all that lovely grain running through there so sit tight watch me do it I have this mounted in my four jaw chuck it's the biggest jewels that I have and I just managed to squeeze it in straight in because I wasn't quite sure how I was going to hold that. So what I'm doing now is I'm just turning this away, just really just taking all the bark off and just getting down to bare wood. This is extremely difficult because the further up that I go, or the further to the left of the picture I go, the less wood I'm actually turning. So if you imagine that top piece c coming round, um, I'm not hitting that very often at all. There's a lot of air in between that I'm trying to turn. So it's just a matter now of doing these pull strokes, just working my way through to the top, and just trying to get that nice fluted shape that I'm looking for. You see from that 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 is slightly at the centre, and there is quite a bit of wood that I've still got to take away. I tried to cut that down, going downhill, letting the bevel rub. That wasn't very successful. I didn't get a very good cut on there at all. So I'm just going in as close as I possibly can to the jewels because I want to optimise the metal wood that I have on the bottom there so I get the deeper vase. I'm almost there now. You see from that how effective those draw cuts are. You can take an awful lot of wood away very, very quickly with those. It is a very good cut to use. I don't know if you saw in that picture there. There must have been um, some sort of wood boring bug in there. There's a small hole. I'll have to rectify that later. I'll just do that with a piece of sawdust and some super glue. I'll just fill it. I will actually go out and check my wood store just to make sure that I haven't brought any bugs in there. So the last thing I want to do is introduce some sort of wood boring bug into my wood store. So there you can see I've taken all the bark away and I'm all down to the bare wood and there is some quite beautiful grain in there. My biggest concern now with trying to hollow this bowl was however I presented it all to this piece of wood I'd only be hitting a very small piece of it as I went round. So I did try to go down through with a drill just to open up slightly in the centre. But as you can see because I was coming through at an angle the it pushed the drill away. Now the great thing about this is because when it's spinning now it actually gives you a view or what happens inside of a bowl which you wouldn't normally see 
so you get almost like what they call a shadow line as it spins around so you can actually see me now hollowing the inside of this bowl I've started off here with a conventional bowl gouge going down through I did swap because it was going in quite so deep very quickly I did swap to using a hollowing tool there's a hollowing tool here I did make this by myself I had a handle that I used and I was looking around to buy some hollow tools and they were quite expensive they were about 70 pounds something like that and so I went to a steel stockist down in Southampton I bought some 16 mil bar I bought I think it was three meters which will make a great deal of hollowing tools I think it was about 12 pound and then I got some of those cutting tools off the internet I think I paid £20 for 12 for those 12mm rain cutters and then all I did was drill a hole in the end uh, I had some taps tapped a thread in there and then put a counter sack the screw in the end and then just ground the, wood, the metal away on the end so that my cutter could go in and I have to say they do work very well I was quite pleased with them So there I am now just using the hollowing tool just to go through and hollow the inside of this whether you call it a vase or a bowl so I've moved my headstock around so it's not run along parallel with the better lathe so it's easier for me to get in there and work with this hollowing tool job I don't think it's a great deal to look at I'll get back to you when I've finished it I don't know how clearly you can see that but I found the easiest way now is I push my chisel in there I push my chisel in there to open that center up once that center is up I'll just use my hollowing tool just to come across there Okay, so that's pretty much as far as I want to go in there. I've got a nice little dish in the bottom of there. And there's got some pretty grain, really beautiful grain running through there. So, I get my electric drill now and start sanding all that up. And again, as I said, all that's got to be sanded by hand in there. Or by pad and electric drill. Well, I've sanded that all down by hand. It's taken me simply ages to do it. And now we're going to apply the sand sealer. The best bit. Let's see what lovely grain we've got in there. Very nice. Certainly soaking that up. Some beautiful grain running through there. 
those different colours, a real light band running through that way. And then there's a real dark one. And there's a completely lighter one running through there. The actual grain of the tree is running that way. That's the beach is starting to sport through there. Very nice. Give that a couple of minutes to dry. All I'm going to do is part that off and then I can put the buffing wheel in the lathe and buff all that up by hand. Really nice finish on there already, I haven't even put any wax on there yet. It's really quite slippery my fingers. Oh, that's so smooth. Let's put some wax on. Oh, there you go, YouTubers. Another finished product. That was quite difficult to turn, actually, for such a small thing. I'm surprised how long that took me to turn. But I think that was well worth it. The grain in that beach is really quite beautiful. It really is. Something unusual, something different. I could see that on somebody's. Uh, dressing table with a, sort of a few trinkets or things in there, earrings maybe, bracelets and you can admire all that wood in there as well, a beautiful grain. For something that was meant, or was on the, on the firewood pile, um, I think that turned out really well. I enjoyed that. The set of piece of wood that I cut it off of is uh, equally as good, or um, got as much grain in there. So you can just see on there there's places on there the on there is just starting to sport across there and down through there down through there you can see it's just beginning to start to sport which always adds character to a piece of wood which is really nice so um, I put a couple of stills up at the end um, if you want to carry on watching it thank you for watching it if you're still watching it thank you for watching it to the end uh, if you did enjoy it Please hit that subscribe button. I've got over 100 now. I'm chuffed to nuts with that. So thank you very much for my subscribers and my regular viewers. Um, as always, I've been Steve Hal, and this has been another very enjoyable couple of hours in my workshop. Thank you and goodbye.